Hey, what is up, Flavor City family? It's Bobby, and today we are gonna rock five healthy meal prep recipes for 2019 that are huge on flavor, easy to make, and I know you're absolutely gonna love. Whether you're starting a New Year's resolution in 2019 or you already eat clean and just need a bunch of new recipes that taste good and are absolutely perfect for five meals for the week, we are gonna hook you up with five awesome meal preps that I know you're gonna love. Before we get started, hook me up, baby. Subscribe to my channel because every week we are rocking out some of the most healthy, tasty recipes on YouTube, and I would love for you to join the Flav City community. All right, first up, we have a comfort food meal prep that is actually good for you and really good tasting. It is delicious chicken breast strips coated in a Italian spice rub, cooked in a zesty tomato sauce and served with roasted root vegetables like parsnips and delicata squash that are glazed in maple syrup and cayenne. Yes, it sounds too good to be good for you, but it ain't, and here's how you do it. This recipe starts with two pounds of boneless and skinless chicken breasts. I like to cut them into strips to make them a little more manageable. Next up, make a quick and easy spice rub with one and a half teaspoons of fennel powder, one and a half teaspoons each of onion and garlic powder, and one teaspoon of dried oregano. Give that a mix up and then season the chicken breast with a generous pinch of salt and a good dusting of the spice rub. Flip it over, do some more salt and some more spice rub. Let the chicken sit at room temperature for 20 minutes and then preheat a cast iron pan over medium high heat with a couple teaspoons of olive oil. Add half of the chicken and let it cook undisturbed for about four minutes. If you wanna save yourself on the cleanup, throw it on the splatter guard. Flip the chicken over, let it go another two minutes. And then before it cooks all the way through, take it out of the pan and we can start building the sauce. Next up, add half a small red onion that's been chopped to the pan, along with three cloves of garlic that are minced. Then finely chop some fresh rosemary. Season that with a little bit of salt and a few cracks of black pepper. Make sure to add a little bit of red pepper flakes for heat, and then add about 14 ounces of chopped tomatoes from the can and a half a cup of water. To balance out the acid in the tomato sauce, I like to add the zest and juice of half an orange. Give that a mix up. Now let's get the chicken back into the pan, put it all in one single layer, and we'll cook it for another five to seven minutes. To finish the chicken, sprinkle over some freshly chopped parsley, give it a mix up, and when done with the chicken, we can move on to the veggie side dish. To safely cut the delicata squash, tap a knife through it using a rolling pin, scoop out the seeds with a spoon, and then slice it into half moons, and then add that to a large bowl with some sliced up parsnips. Season everything with a generous shot of olive oil, a good pinch of salt, and a few cracks of pepper. Give that a good mix up. You can also use butternut squash if you can't find the delicata. Now grab a sheet tray out of the oven that's been preheating. That way when you spill the veggies onto it, they start cooking and caramelizing immediately. Give it a good shake into one even layer and then pop it in the oven for about 25 minutes. To make the maple glaze while the veggies are cooking, add two tablespoons of maple syrup to a small bowl along with half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Give that a good mix up and then grab the veggies out of the oven Paint that glaze all over those roasted veggies. Pop them back in the broiler for about five minutes until they're well browned and caramelized. And then grab them out of the oven. To finish them off, hit them up with some lemon zest to wake up the flavor, some chopped pistachios for crunch, and some fresh parsley. And to plate this meal, grab a nice scoop of the veggies, put that down, a few pieces of the chicken, cut into that chicken, look how nice and juicy it is inside, and we're done. All right, next up, we got a funky little meatball meal prep using ground turkey thighs. I season it with like ancho chili peppers, raisins, and papitas because on this channel, we love crunch and we love texture. And then instead of starchy rice, we're subbing in quinoa with black beans and some charred shishito peppers on the side. The meal prep is gangbusters and here's how you make it. To make the meatballs, start off with two pounds of ground turkey thigh, and then to season it, add one and a half teaspoons each of ancho chili powder, some ground cumin, a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, half a teaspoon of dried thyme, then add just over a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, a few cracks of black pepper. Give everything a mix with your hands, and now it starts to get funky. Add two tablespoons of papitas that are roughly chopped. Those are just Mexican pumpkin seeds. Two tablespoons of raisins for sweetness and about one tablespoon of freshly chopped cilantro. Then give it one good mix up. To form the meatballs, I tip your hands in some water and then form large meatballs. I find that the water prevents the mixture from really sticking to your hand. Once you have them all formed, stash them in the fridge for about 15 minutes so they can firm up. Then add a couple teaspoons of avocado oil to a preheating cast iron pan. Add about half of the meatballs to the pan. You don't want to overcrowd it. 
and all we want to do is cook it for about two minutes until it's nice and golden and then flip it. Nice and crusty on the outside, but it's still raw on the inside. Do that on the second side, get the meatballs out, repeat that with the second batch, and then transfer them to a 350 degree oven for 15 minutes so they can cook through evenly. Then grab the meatballs out of the oven, and that's perfect. You can see those kind of flecks of nuts and the raisins, they're perfectly cooked through and nice and juicy. Now for the quinoa and black beans, add a couple shots of avocado oil to a preheated nonstick pan, and then add one onion that's been finely chopped, along with a quarter teaspoon of salt and a few cracks of black pepper. Cook that for about five minutes, and then add three cloves of garlic that are finely minced, and then add one 16 ounce can of black beans that have been drained and rinsed. Add a half a teaspoon each of ancho chili powder and ground cumin. Cook that for a few minutes, and then add three cups of cooked quinoa. I like to make that ahead of time so it kind of dries out. Also go in with about one tablespoon of chopped walnuts, and then cook that for about four to five minutes. That way the quinoa really kind of soaks up the flavors of the pan and the walnuts get toasted. Turn the heat off the pan. And to finish this side dish, I'm gonna add some freshly chopped cilantro and a little bit of lime juice to wake up the flavors. Last up, add some shishito peppers to the cast iron pan over medium high heat. I like to buy these at Trader Joe's and just cook them with a little bit of oil for about eight to 10 minutes until they're charred and blistered on all sides. To plate this dish, layer down some quinoa and black beans and then put down a few of those juicy turkey meatballs, a few of those charred shishito peppers, top it off with some freshly chopped cilantro, and then a little bit of lime zest. All right, this recipe makes five servings for the week, and when you cut into that turkey meatball, look at that. I love seeing all of the ingredients that we put in there, and this has so much flavor, and it's so darn healthy. Next time you get a hankering for some Chinese takeout, do not go on Grubhub or Caviar. Make this next meal prep. It is my Asian salmon cakes with a sweet and sticky glaze served with this low carb shirataki noodle and veggie stir fry that will get your Chinese takeout fix way healthier than anything you can have delivered to your door. And it's probably way cheaper. This is how you do it. To make the salmon cakes, take two pounds of salmon that has the skin removed, chop them into large chunks, and then I like to go all Wolverine and grab two knives and just chop away until most of it's fine, but there's still little chunks left. Transfer that to a bowl, pinch in half a teaspoon of salt and a few cracks of black pepper. And then grate three cloves of garlic directly into the bowl using a microplaner, along with one and a half teaspoons of fresh ginger, and then shake in about three tablespoons of finely sliced green onions. Use your hands to mix up everything very well, and then preheat a large nonstick pan, drizzle in just a half a teaspoon of grapeseed oil, and then grab about a golf ball size mixture of the salmon, place that into the pan, and then press it down with your hand. Add a few more into the pan, and then use a fish spatula to press it down into a fish cake. After about three minutes, flip over the salmon cakes. Perfect, nice and crusty. Now let it cook another minute, and then take one of my favorite store-bought ingredients, sweet chili sauce, put like a teaspoon over each, and then dust over some sesame seeds, spread it around with a spoon, let them cook another one minute, and then get them out of the pan, and the fish cakes are sweet, sticky, glazed, and juicy, and they're done. For the low carb stir fry, I'm gonna grab a packet of shirataki noodles, but we have to cook them for about eight minutes because they have a lot of moisture in there. And if we don't do this, it's gonna sog down or water down our stir fry. So just cook them in a dry nonstick pan for about eight minutes until they dry and the bottom of the pan is white and cakey. Take them out and then roughly chop them so they're not so long and then drizzle a couple teaspoons of grapeseed oil in that same pan. And then go in with sugar snap peas, red bell peppers, and carrots, and let that cook for about seven minutes. Then add back the shirataki noodles to the pan. And then for the sauces to make it a good stir fry, I'm gonna add about two teaspoons of sriracha sauce. And then you can use low sodium soy sauce, or I'm actually using coconut amino acids, about three tablespoons and then a teaspoon of toasted sesame oil. And then for a little bit of sour, I'm gonna add two teaspoons of rice wine vinegar. Cook that for a few minutes, give it a really good mix up. And then to finish off the dish, add some chopped peanuts, about two tablespoons, and a quarter cup of green onions that are finely sliced. Give that a nice mix up, and the stir fry is done. To plate this dish, scoop down some of the noodles and veggies, top it off with two of the fish cakes, a little bit of green onions, and some sesame seeds. And there it is, five meals for the week, and you're done. This next meal prep was inspired by a trip that Desi and I took to Mexico. We brought back the flavors and made these delicious spice-crusted al pastor pork chops with a creamy coconut pineapple sauce served with low-carb cauliflower broccoli rice and beans. That is like going over the border without even leaving your kitchen. This is how you do it. 
This recipe starts with 10 thin cut pork chops. We're gonna make a spice rub for that using one and a half teaspoons each of smoked paprika, ancho chili powder, cumin, and a half a teaspoon of ground coriander. Give that a good mix up. Season the pork chops with a generous pinch of salt and some of the spice rub on the first side. Flip them over and do a little more salt and some spice rub. Allow the pork chops to sit out for 20 minutes and then drizzle two teaspoons of grapeseed oil into a cast iron pan that's preheating over medium high heat. And since these are thin cut pork chops, only let them go for about three minutes on the first side. Don't touch them, then flip them over and check it out. They have that beautiful crust. And then two more minutes on the second side and then get them out of the pan. They're nice and juicy and perfectly cooked. Now to make that creamy coconut sauce that goes with the pork chops, add half a cup of coconut milk to the same pan, along with half a cup of canned or frozen pineapple chunks, the zest and juice of half a lime. Give that a mix up and just cook it at a simmer for a few minutes until it thickens up and the sauce is done. It's that easy. Pour it all over those hot pork chops and the pork chops al pastor are done. All right, to start the cauliflower and broccoli rice, add a shot of grapeseed oil to the same pan and then add some chopped up red onions, a few cloves of garlic that are minced, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a few cracks of pepper. Give that a mix up. Finally chop one red chili and add that to the pan. Next up, grate one medium sized head of cauliflower on the largest setting of your box grater to turn that into cauliflower rice and do the same thing with about one and a half pounds of broccoli. Add that to the pan, along with half a cup of canned black beans, and then add some more salt and some more pepper. Next, pop a lid onto the pan and cook it for about five minutes over medium low so the veggies have a chance to cook. Then to finish the dish, shake in two tablespoons of unsweetened and shredded coconut flakes, two tablespoons of chopped cashews, two to three tablespoons of chopped cilantro, and then grate in some lime zest and squeeze in the juice of half a lime. Give that one more mix up and it's done. Grab a couple of those pork chops, put it into a glass meal prep container. Don't forget to top it with some of the al pastor sauce and then add a big scoop of the cauliflower and broccoli rice. And then cut into that juicy pork chop. Mm, that looks good. And last up, we're getting our ramen on. I love a big old bowl of ramen, but it turns out there's a ridiculous amount of fat and calories and sodium in that big pot of tonkatsu ramen they boil overnight. This is my low fat and low carb version with mushrooms, shirataki noodles, and a rich and delicious ramen broth served with pork and mushroom lettuce cups with crunchy peanuts and chilies. The flavors in this one are next level and perfect for the winter. Here's how you make it. To start the ramen soup, preheat a large soup pot over medium heat. Add a couple teaspoons of avocado oil. Then go in with one cup of chopped onions and then slice four ounces of shiitake mushrooms and add that to the pot along with a quarter teaspoon of salt and give that a mix. Cook that for about seven or eight minutes. Next up, finely grate one teaspoon of fresh ginger. Add that to the pot, along with three cloves of garlic that are finely minced. And then for that umame bomb for this soup, add three tablespoons of miso paste. Then add two quarts of beef stock or beef broth. If you wanna keep it veggie, you can use veggie stock. To round off the flavors, add one teaspoon of toasted sesame oil, one teaspoon of sambal olik or sriracha sauce, and one tablespoon of low sodium soy sauce. Bring that to a simmer and let it cook for about 20 to 25 minutes. Now, when it comes to shirataki noodles, I love this brand of Pasta Zero by Ne Soya. Empty the packet, rinse it under cold water, drain it very well, chop up the noodles a few times, and then add it to the pot of ramen. Let the ramen cook another few minutes, and then it's done. Ladle a portion into a bowl, and then hit it up with any garnishes you want. I like using grated carrots, some chopped chives, and some red chilies for heat. For the pork lettuce wraps, add half an onion and eight ounces of cremini mushrooms to a large pan. Cook that for about eight or 10 minutes until the veggies have really cooked down. Then go in with a pound and a quarter of ground pork. Cook that for a few minutes until the pork has some color. Then add three cloves of garlic that are finely minced and one teaspoon of freshly grated ginger. Add a pinch of salt to the pan. And what's really cool is we're using the exact same sauces. So hit it up with a teaspoon of sambal olek, half a teaspoon of toasted sesame oil, and one and a half tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce. Cook that for a couple more minutes, then add a little bit of lime juice for some acid, a couple tablespoons of chopped peanuts for crunch, and a couple tablespoons of chives. To finish off the lettuce wraps, scoop some of the filling into a lettuce cup. I like to use Boston butter lettuce. Then garnish with some more peanuts, some chives, and some sliced red chilies. This recipe makes five servings for the week, which is perfect for the winter time because that ramen and those lettuce wraps are so darn comforting. And there it is, you guys. Five healthy and tasty meal prepping for weight loss recipes for 2019. 
All of those recipes are legit delicious and they're all down below in the description box. When you make these recipes on social media, tag me. I love to see what you guys are doing. If you wanna see my other healthy meal prep recipes for weight loss, I'll put them down below in the description box. We got keto, we got Whole30, we got gluten-free, we got everything to hook you up and we always bring the flavor. Um, I got two more videos streaming below me right now. Share this video, but I will see you next week. Until then, hashtag keep on cooking mad love. Peace.